into the smallest action conceivable. We need to modify that to make it really actionable. So the first is making it hyper, hyper specific. All right, so we need a timeline of by what point in time. What are some of the prerequisites, the component pieces of doing that? The long list of these potential buckets of activities. Uh, and from there, you would look at next physical actions. And you can apply that to any number of these. Let's just say it's 10 buckets. When I'm procrastinating because there is indecision, if I have 10 things on my to-do list or 10 potential projects I could pursue, what to do in that situation. And what I ask myself is, which one of these will make all the rest easier to do, if done first, or all the rest of them irrelevant, don't even need to do them. That is how I will then hone in on, on one piece of the puzzle. And then you wanna make it as small as possible. You wanna make it as easy as possible to develop it as part of your routine, to make it as automatic as anything else that you do consistently. Make it as small as possible. Meaning, in the beginning, do less than you are capable of doing. When you think something is too big, you want to make it, again, as easy as possible. And it all comes down to tiny homework assignments. Lower your standards. Your standards are just too high. You're creating performance anxiety for yourself. I'm going to kill it. I need an ambitious goal. There is a very high probability that you're going to fall short of that. And then you will get demoralized. Then you will get intimidated by the task. And then you will start procrastinating. So make the hurdle. Make the success threshold really, really low. What ends up happening? You will feel successful because you've checked your box and then very often you will exceed that for extra credit. But I'm feeling great and I'm in the flow. Maybe I'll do 10, maybe I'll do 20. Or that is what derails a lot of people. And it also makes the task less intimidating. If you are looking at a task, I know I'm not going to get this done, but I'm going to sprint for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then take a five minute break. And then I will sprint again for 20 to 20 minutes and the magic of those time constraints complexity of a task swelling to fill the time that it's allotted once you have these positive constraints for a creative person very important to have positive constraints being able to do anything you want all the time is a recipe for disaster and paralysis and procrastination the next way that you can apply positive constraint is by building in incentives and consequences make yourself socially accountable people work a lot harder to counteract loss aversion. Keep it small, keep it defined, rig it so you can win, and when in doubt, figure out a way to create a loss or shame if you don't actually tackle your task and achieve some type of measurable goal by a specific point.